Welcome to Algebra 1. This is Topic 1-2, Properties of Real Numbers. The essential question is, what are some of the properties of real numbers? And we begin. So real numbers. Well, real numbers are things you can graph on a number line. Below I have a number line. Now numbers you graph on the number line could be negative 3, because this is on the number line right here. You can graph 0 on the number line. What if I had right here, you could graph 1.5 down here. This could be the graph of negative 1 and 1 half. Over here we can graph right here. Let's call this 3.5. These are all numbers we can put on the number line, so they're all real numbers. Other properties of real numbers, they can be categorized. So one category of real numbers is integers. Integers are numbers that don't have decimals and aren't written as fractions. So they're, they can be negative or positive or zero. So for example, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you keep counting up. Keep counting up all the way to infinity. And then you go to the negative direction, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3, and you can keep going down that way. So those are integers. Whole numbers, whole numbers are just a subsection of integers. Whole numbers include 0 and everything above that. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and keep going up. There are no negative numbers. Natural numbers, it's a subsection of whole numbers. It's all the whole numbers except for zero. So you start at one, two, three, four, and you keep counting up. Two other ways to categorize real numbers are rational and irrational. So rational numbers, rational numbers can be written as a quotient of integers. Quotient, it, you're dividing. So this can be represented as a divided by b. So that's the formula here, and a and b are some integers. So a could be an integer, let's say a is negative 2, and b is 5. This would be a rational number. We could also do 1 over 10. This is also a rational number. Rationals can also be terminating decimals. So 0 0.125. Terminating means it ends. So it doesn't keep repeating forever. It doesn't keep going on. It just stops at 5. Another one could be 0 0.5. This is a terminating decimal. Repeating decimals. This means that there's a pattern that keeps repeating forever. So for example, 0 0.111111 repeating forever, just a bunch of ones. Another example could be 0. Point, let's go 3, 3, 3, 3, keeps repeating forever. These are two, these are two rational numbers. And the reason they're rational is because you can write them as a quotient of integers. So for example, the 0 0.125 you can write as 1 over 8. 0 0.5 is also 1 half. Repeating decimal right here, repeating 1 forever, this is equivalent of 1 ninth. And right here, repeating the 3 is, since this is repeating 1 is 1 ninth, repeating 3 is 3 ninths, which can also be simplified to 1 third. Irrational numbers. So irrational numbers are decimals that neither terminate or repeat. So they don't stop and they don't repeat a pattern. So one example of this is the number pi. Pi, we usually call this 3.14. We're just rounding it to 3.14, because it actually keeps going on forever. And this number doesn't repeat, and it doesn't stop. Another thing with irrationals is you cannot write as a quotient of integers. So you can't write it as a over b. Pi can't be represented with a and over b as two different integers, or two integers. So that doesn't work. Uh, other things about real numbers. You can have opposites of real numbers, and this is called the additive inverse. The formula for that is if you have a number a, and you add the negative of a, this is always going to add up to 0. So for example, 5 plus negative 5, that equals 0. What if we went negative 1 plus the opposite of negative 1, which would be negative negative 1, well, negative negative 1 is just positive 1, so that's negative 1 plus 1, and that equals 0. So that's opposites. Uh, real numbers also have reciprocals. It's a multiplicative inverse. What this means is if you have a number a, and you multiply it by the inverse, which is 1 divided by a, this always comes out to 1. So for example, what if I had the number 5? and then multiply that by the reciprocal, 1 fifth, that comes out to 5 over 5, which reduces to 1. 
properties of real numbers. So these are four properties right here. We have the commutative property. What does that mean? That means a plus b equals b plus a. This is, this is the addition form of the commutative property. So you can flip the order. a plus b is the same thing as going b plus a. Flipping the order doesn't matter. Another way to do that is a times b, or a b, equals b times a. Flipping the order doesn't matter. Associative property. So one way you'll commonly see this is a plus parentheses b plus c equals a plus b plus c. So associative means we're just we're as, we're putting parentheses around different parts because it doesn't matter if you add the b plus c first or the a plus b first. It's when you add it all together, it's all going to equal the same thing. For example, if you have five plus three plus four, that comes out and that's going to be equivalent to 5 plus 3 plus 4. Because even if you add this 3 plus 4 first, you get 5 plus 7, which is going to equal 12. And over here, if you add the 5 plus 3, that's going to be 8 plus 4. That's also going to equal 12. So associative property. The identity property. All right, the identity property. We have two identity properties. The addition property. So the formula for that is a plus 0 equals a. So if you add zeros to something, it still equals that same something. So like 10 plus 0 is still going to equal the 10. The multipli multiplication part of identity is when you say a. So number a times 1 will equal a. So if you ever multiply something by 1, it still comes out to that same thing. So 10 times 1, that's still going to equal 10. The distributive property formula for the distributive property is a times the quantity b plus c equals ab plus ac. So what's happening here is you're distributing this a to both the b and the c. So it becomes a times b, which shows up right here, plus the a times c, which shows up right here. Moving on. So here's some examples. Pause the video so you can try these out. And here we go. So graph each number on a number line. So you just want to label this on the number line. So what I'm going to do is take that negative 2, and I'm going to move it to where it is in the number line, draw a dot. Well, negative 2 is pretty easy. It's right there. So negative 2 is right here. Now I'm going to take that 2 and 1 half. Well, 2 and 1 half, that's halfway between 2 and 3. So that's going to show up right here. It's halfway, and that's 2 and a half. That's about 2.5. Square root of 10. OK, it's a little trickier. Like, wait, where's that in the number line? Well, what you want to do is you want to find perfect squares that are close to 10. I know 10 is close to the, well, we'll say it's close to the square root of 9. The square root of 9 equals 3. 10 a little bit bigger than that. So this square root of 10 is going to be just a little bit more than 3. So it's 3 point something. I don't know what that is. You can plug it in a calculator. We're going to put it right about there. Last example. Pause the video and try it out. And let's finish this. So we're comparing the two numbers. Use greater than or less than. Negative 4 and negative square root of 4. Well, when you square root something, you know this, if you square root 4, that's going to equal 2. So negative square root of 4, that's the same thing as negative 2. Negative 4 and negative 2, which, one's, which inequality am I going to use? Well, the negative 2 is bigger. So it goes that way. It is less than. Negative 4 is less than negative 2. Negative square root of 38 and 6. Well, 38 is close to the square root of 36, which is 6. And since 38 is a little bit bigger, I know this is going to be a little bit bigger than 6. So it's like negative 6 point, uh, maybe it's 1 or 2. I'll just guess 1. As long as we know it's bigger than 6. So the inequality here, this is a negative. Well. I guess this didn't even matter anyway, because this is always going to be less than. A negative is less than a positive. This last one here, square root of 26. That's close to the square root of 25, which equals 5. So it's going to be something that's a little bit bigger than 5, about, let's call it 5.1 something. So well, that's definitely going to be bigger than 4.7. So this is also 4.7 is less than square root of 26. And that is it.